Kinky Wizards was initially started when myself and my brother were, gosh, six or seven. I started playing clown out when I was about seven. Uh, my brother started playing piano. Uh, we joined an orchestra. Together we went to an orchestra uh, for six odd years. I was, had the opportunity to do percussion, so my line of playing started purely just with solo snare drum and just percussion in a youth orchestra, then moved up to a jazz band, they got introduced to a kit. I remember him smashing up all the pots and pans in the house. And my parents, for a bit of a joke, bought him a, a, a I think it was a session for a basic drum kit, which he ruined, but that just started his flare off. And my dad, my father was a big influence, he played guitar, and he was a big fan of, of uh, Dire Straits, so he played all Dire Straits solos and guitar. So I, those two would be in the, in, the, in the room playing. Eventually I managed then, I just thought, right, there's a guitar and there's drums. How can I be a part of this? My mother and father decided to get him a bass guitar so he, he could come in the room and we could start playing, playing some stuff together because my father, of course, had a guitar. And from there, really, we started composing bass and drum tracks. So my parents would come back from the pub, uh, Friday, Saturday nights, most, most weekends, and my mother would come marching up the stairs, nagging us, please come and play. And we, were, we didn't really have an option because the vinyls were going downstairs and I could hear my mother screaming at the top of her voice. And we'd have to go into the music room and play till the early hours of the morning. We just got into it more and more over the years. We've done gigs, people don't are not used to seeing just a bassist and drummer taken to the stage, you know. Um, and obviously because it was lacking guitar and vocals, with the stuff we were, we were, we were uh, making up had to have, you know, all, all the extras in there. No singing, no guitars, let's make it, you know, as massive as we can. So I, I start doing, you know, there's a lot of slap, finger tapping stuff. And the drums, it's all a bit mental and they stick spinning. Over the years, we've just sort of put tracks together. Um, tracks that have then evolved from tracks that we even play today. Stuff that we never thought, you know, maybe it was 10 to 15 tracks, that then we would just solidify into one. <laughs> Day one, um, kit's all set up, sounding cool, just really struggling to get a even mix with not having any overspill of obviously the toms. Um, but we're two tracks in, so yeah, it's coming together, it's cool. For all the drum lovers, um, so we got a six and a half Craviotto solitaire snare here. I've got my old faithful <coughs> five and a half, just Come with my first ever talent kit. I get this bad boy on a go, which is a uh, five and a half Craviato Ash, which really gives absolute chaos. Right, um, just for your attention, everyone, everyone, I'm on the mic, therefore you listen to me. Adding now with, uh, with Ryan being on the guitar has given us a totally different edge. We met Ryan a couple of years ago and um, we were told when we, when we met him that he was a good guitarist. Well, I jammed with them a lot back around that time between 2010 and 11 but then I moved to Guildford uh, to go to music college and then since I've come back in 2014 we've been working solidly on this album. He comes up with ideas which have apps, to be honest with you, they've blown my mind. Um, his creativity is um, phenomenal. Yeah, it's just one section at the end where I do... I've always been very driven um, and ambitious as a guitar player in what I can achieve technically. I feel like that is fully fulfilled when I play with these guys. Um, I literally throw anything at them and they chew it up and spit it back out with me, which is glorious. Do you want to adjust the track? I just can't hear the bass enough, to be honest with you. Huh? I can't hear the bass. 
Going based on it, no worries, man. I'll do that, it's fine then. <laughs> that was going to be a big problem. <laughs> When you tell me that, fucking ten hours ago! Fucking <laughs> dead! Are you all done? <laughs> I am. I am, but I, I, I'm. Um... How many tracks of bass? The f uh, all nine are done, man. All nine. I feel like an absolute turd in front of that because I'm. Can you. Can you. Can you, like. <laughs> do something like. This is the guitar I predominantly use with the Kinky Wizards. It is a good old Fender American Special Stratocaster. And this one here, which is, is a bit more heavier to it, which would be one of my Super Strats, which is an Ibanez Paul Gilbert signature with a fixed bridge. I have got a CE24 Paul Reed Smith, made of alder. Last, but certainly not least, is probably the first fancy guitar I ever had, which is my Ibanez RG2620. I think one of the key things that these guys have always done is um, have a very strong funk element about them, but they can also tap into rock, jazz, metal, really, really eclectic range of styles. Uh, and for me, I felt it was important when I was writing material for them that pushed all of our boundaries. Um, and I think I've introduced the jazz element a lot in particular for this record. It's brilliant to work with somebody who's got such a creative you know, mind. He's got such a unique feel. Well, we wouldn't have if I didn't resolve the little bits yesterday, but... You are a demon bishop. The beauty of having Andrew, as soon as you go into a studio, you've got a lot of times you've got a sound engineer that you've never met. You don't know how he's, if he's going to understand the type of music you're going to do. Now, bonus is having Andrew as a, as a, as a, as a, as a good mate and someone who knows the music you do because he's mixed you at live concerts. That is straight away is a massive head start. I don't think there is a more trustworthy, robust and, and dedicated recording engineer. He knows how to get the best results out of us. He is equally as adventurous as we are in terms of how he approaches engineering and the use of microphones. He can cope with Jiffy's enormous kit. Um, even if it takes him uh, spending a whole morning with a soldering iron to get enough inputs to cover his drum kit. With somebody like Andrew Bishop, he really understands and knows exactly what I want. So when I turn up with four snare drums, dip, different depths, different heads, different woods, I, he knows what I'm aiming for, particularly for what particular track. Um, and I think that's very important because you know, I can imagine that without that sort of help and understanding, it can you can you, the whole sound of tracks could just sound very similar, which is not what we're obviously about. Sneaky, it is sneaky. Let's bring that up a bit. It's nice. In terms of uh, the production itself, um, everything is about what we can do live. That's the thing we've pushed the most in the last two years. We've played tons of shows, um, and these songs are accumulated and come to life through live performance and it's made the studio process quite challenging but we're trying to capture that live element as best as we can really. We are more um, prolific than ever in our writing at the moment. Obviously we've had so much hype in trying to get this album done and get this album ready, you know, so we've, uh, we've had to put a lot of ideas to the side. So there is a, there's a lot of other roads that we want to venture down to have a look to see what we can, what we can do. We'll be planning on taking things live and maybe um, doing a, a run of shows where they feature the first album and I might play a little bit of keyboards with that and then we'll play hopefully all of the new album in the new year. We only really care about the music. For, for me anyway, you know, my opinion is, is that I only care about making the album as, as fun and as, as the energy as much as possible. So then we've done clinics and shows that plenty of people turn up and it's just an amazing opportunity to just do what you've always done and people want to come in and be part of it.